one of the top questions that we get about rattlesnake fencing is how high does it need to be? These questions aren't only from homeowners, but also in regards to regulations from homeowners associations and plant communities who unfortunately often enforce subsufficient standards for snake fence installations. The quick answer is three feet high. In this video, I'm gonna show you how we got to that answer and why it's so important to do it right that if it's done wrong, you probably shouldn't install snake fencing at all. A quick recap on this topic, rattlesnake fencing is a physical barrier that's designed and installed in such a way that it prevents rattlesnakes from getting into an area. The exact specifications of how to do this effectively is what our group has developed over the past decade to create the standard for this type of work. That being said, rattlesnakes are thinking and unpredictable animals. So these standards need to be based on their behavior and their physical capabilities more than anything else. And a quick disclaimer, this design is intended to exclude rattlesnake species native to the desert southwest. And while it has a level of varying effectiveness on other types of snakes, there's nothing that will exclude all types of snakes in all places all of the time. If you have someone that's promising you that, throw that contact in the trash. So back on topic, how high does a snake fence need to be? This question really is, how far up a smooth surface from the nearest foothold can a rattlesnake climb? So, rattlesnakes can and do climb many things. Trees, bushes, piles of rocks, anything with sufficient texture and grip opportunity can be used to climb. However, smooth surfaces without protrusions are not climbable by rattlesnakes. Concrete or metal walls are impassable to rattlesnakes, as long as they're high enough to keep them from getting their heads over the top. That's why smooth steel mesh of the right gap size is the perfect material to use when installed at the right height. From testing and observations, we notice a couple of things about how rattlesnakes attempt to climb smooth surfaces. First, the structure of their body prohibits them from climbing straight up more than about a third of their body length, unless additional support is offered. Second, if there is stabilizing support like a tight corner or a rock to push against, they can climb higher or up to about half their body length. That means that we need a fence that is half as long as the body length of the largest rattlesnake in any given area, with some additional buffer to eliminate against variability in height or extraordinarily rare and large individuals. That means to exclude a four foot rattlesnake, which is a very large adult, you'd want a minimum height of 30 inches, which is half the length of that snake with an appropriate buffer of six inches. To exclude a five foot rattlesnake, which would be an exceptionally rare monster sized snake in the desert southwest, you'd want 36 inches, or again, half the length of the snake with a six inch buffer. In almost all cases, 30 inches high will be just fine, and we've certainly installed quite a few fences where that is appropriate in Phoenix. However, as a regional standard, 36 inches is our recommendation as of 2020. In the desert southwest, the largest rattlesnake you're going to see is a western diamondback in about the five foot range. Most are much smaller. Around Phoenix and Tucson, where we work, a four foot rattlesnake is a very big snake and most top out around three feet. These sizes are based not only on our thousands of documented captures and survey work, but also available published data, peer reviewed literature, and basically anybody that measures them rather than eyeballs it. If you're living in parts of Texas or in the southeast where rattlesnakes get a little bigger, maybe in the six foot range, just use that same formula stated above and you'll be covered. To test all of this, we conducted some simple experiments. First, we constructed a box with an adjustable floor to create varying heights of mesh to test. The box has two settings, the 24 inch height that is required by many HOAs and the 36 inch height as per our standard. There's black duct tape along the top and sides to remove any sharp edges that could possibly injure the snakes or deter them if they get up that high. We put a Wi-Fi security camera on it and left the room. The quality is pretty bad, but for recording 24 hour video for days at a time, this is what we had available and it's more than enough to see what happens. Next, we need some snakes. Our first snake is a huge snake from out of state. It's the largest Western Diamondback we could get our hands on and represents the largest possible rattlesnake you could encounter in Arizona, measuring at exactly five feet long, nose to tail, excluding the rattle. First, he went into the 24 inch box. Took him a little while to figure out which direction to go, but when he did, easily climbed out of the 24 inch height mesh. We repeated this several times and with each instance, he escaped more quickly than the last time. It's clear that 24 inch tall fence will not keep out a five foot rattlesnake. Next, we tried the 36 inch mesh. The snake stayed in the box for a period of five days, moving often and trying to climb up and out at the corners that he had previously done that worked so well with the 24 inch high fence, but he was unable to escape. 
Eventually, it curled up into a corner and stopped trying, at which time we ended the test. From this, we can see that a 36-inch tall fence can repel a rattlesnake up to 5 feet long. Next, we repeated the experiment with a more typically sized rattlesnake that homeowners could encounter here in Arizona at 4 feet long. We placed her in the 24-inch high box and waited. It took her quite a bit longer, but she eventually was able to just get her nose over the top and pull herself up and over. When tested in the 36 inch box, she stopped trying quickly and spent most of the five day period just sleeping in the corner. As expected, a 36 inch height effectively repels a four foot snake just as it did the larger five foot snake, upholding the standard and underlying mechanics just as we explained previously. So the conclusion, the 24 inch height that is so often required by HOAs and installed by do-it-yourselfers and pest control guys is not sufficient to protect your yard from rattlesnakes. To do the job effectively, you want a minimum of 30 inches with a standard recommended height of 36 inches. Very importantly, a rattlesnake fence that lets some rattlesnakes in is more or less an effective rattlesnake trap. In situations where a property can't be protected correctly, either by using the right materials or the correct standard, it's probably best just to do nothing at all and allow snakes that might find their way into your property to be able to leave as well. In many cases, the reasons why someone is not able to install a fence to the correct standard lie in the HOA regulations for the community. It's not at all that HOAs don't care about their resident safety. It's just that exactly how to make these snake fences is pretty new stuff and it's not really written down many places. So decisions are often made that reflect aesthetic preferences over functional ones. But in our experience, most communities are more than happy to adapt their regulations based on solid reason, which is what we're providing here. And to wrap it up, a few closing notes on the subject of fence climbing snakes. That's important, but don't quite fit the height question. First, rattlesnakes can't climb straight up a concrete or block wall like a slug. It's physiologically impossible. Their bodies just don't work that way and they can't belly crawl up a flat surface any more than you or I could. Second, it's not always a matter of what rattlesnakes can do, but what they will do. Even with fencing installed, it's a good idea to try and keep food, water, and shelter opportunities for them within a protected area to a minimum. With the right snake fence installed, you'll have the best protection you possibly can, but I'd still not invite them over to perpetually test it. To illustrate this, what I often say is, when I go to the grocery store, if I really wanted to, I could probably find my way onto the roof somehow. I don't need to though, so I don't do that. But if they went crazy and decided that the roof is now where they're gonna store all the food, I'm gonna be trying a lot harder to do something that I previously did not care at all about doing, and I'm gonna get on the roof. So even with the fence installed, stick with the best practice for rattlesnake prevention too. And lastly, keep in mind that everything I'm discussing here is for rattlesnakes specifically. There are some very good harmless climbers out there like gopher snakes, coach whips, and king snakes that can do some fun things like climb straight up rough stucco walls. So seeing one of these snakes in a rattlesnake fence protected area is not an indicator that the fence has failed in any way. I realize that many people choose to install a rattlesnake fence with the intention of never seeing any kind of snake ever again, but let's face it, most people don't like snakes and don't want to see them, but we got to draw a big distinction between snakes that might look scary and snakes that pose an actual danger to people and pets, and the latter is all we really care about in this case. So that's it for now. Be sure to take a look at our other snake fence videos, in particular, the one that addresses mesh size and baby rattlesnakes. And as always, if you have questions about rattlesnake fencing, Leave them in the comments and I'll get the best answer I can to you as soon as I can. And if we get enough of the same question, we'll work on another video just like this one. Be sure to get on our Facebook page for a lot more information as it happens. Thanks for watching.